why companies are looking for habit forming products like Instagram, like Facebook, like video games. If you want to learn how they work and how they were designed, you just need to learn four steps. And I will share with you these four steps in less than, I think, 30 minutes. Enjoy. Welcome back to Just Stop Marketing. Why a company or a business should think about the habit as a strategy. Before I start to explain the reasons, I want to tell you the definition of a habit. Three things, three factors in all definitions are so important to know. First, little or no conscious. We do something, when we do something with little or no conscious thought is a habit. The second point is that the brain takes a shortcut. The brain takes a shortcut that we can do the next thing without thinking. So it happens automatically. Yeah. So the next point is that 50% of daily routines that we do is a habit. That means we don't think about them. We are doing them unconsciously or really, really less conscious. We are less conscious about them. So right now that we find out what is the definition of a habit, let's see why a, why a business uh, tries to find out a habit as a strategy. One, two, three, four, five reasons. One by one I explain. The first reason why uh, uh, businesses are looking for, for a habit as a strategy is that the long uh, customer lifetime value. Because when a habit uh, forms, the lifetime of this habit is so long, it's not a short time. Habit, when a habit is shaped, it continues for a long time, it's not something short for a short time so the customer lifetime value is long so first reason second one pricing flexibility when we get used to a habit when we accept a habit when we get it when when the habit forms we are the users are less pricing uh sensitive they have less pricing sensitive sensitivity so they are not like someone uh, who is doing or who is uh, using something normal because it's a habit we want to go back to that why there are two things that's important about uh, knowing about the habit habit starts as a vitamin as something good to have something good to have but later on it's like a painkiller then we cannot avoid it it's like a must have so all habits start like vitamin, good to have, and later on, it's like a painkiller, like uh, we can say a must have. So we cannot avoid them. Why? Because it brings for us pain. Okay, so go back to the next point. The next point is fast growth. Before I explain fast growth, I, I, would, I would like to sh share with you uh, an important idea, VCT or viral cycle time. What is viral cycle time? Viral cycle time is the amount of time that a user uh, takes for a user to invite a friend. For example, I'm using uh, Facebook. The time that it takes that I invite one of my friends or tag one of my friends is uh, VCT or viral cycle time when and when when a business can have a habit as a strategy it has faster growth because of the this when the, this habit is shaped is uh, vct is so high like uh nowadays you maybe you want to 
add value to your friends and you see something interesting on Facebook, or Instagram, or whatever, okay? So you tag your friend, you invite him or her to that uh, product or service. The next point is competitive advantage. When, when uh, a habit is the strategy of a business, it's not easy to attack that business because habit is so strong. It doesn't come easy. It doesn't come out of the business, out of the mind of the users easily. So it brings a competitive advantage to that business. And next uh, reason is mind monopoly. Mind monopoly is that it's proven. Uh, as I can say, for example, old, old habits die hard. Old habits die hard. When a habit shaped, it's not easy to forget that or avoid that. Uh, maybe you have heard that two third, two third of people that they stop the alcoholic people that they stop drinking. Less than one year, less than one year, they go back to drinking. They again grab the bottle. Why? Because old habits die hard. So it brings monopoly for them. The previous, the older habits is not easy to be erased. Okay, so we can say last in, first out. Those ones that they uh, that they were there earlier, they have competitive advantage over the new ones. Okay, let's go to the next point. We found out why businesses are trying to use a habit strategy. Now we want to move forward and find out what is what does it mean. Hook, the name of the book. Yeah, so hook means a habit forming product. As a business, when we want to build a habit forming product, what are the what are the steps? How we can start to build this amazing product? So it has four steps. Okay, trigger first step action, second step, and uh, variable reward. Actually, reward, we can say, huh? Variable reward, part three. And the last step is investment. Let's start with the first one, trigger. Trigger means something that asks the users or causes the users uh, to take an action. So take an action is the purpose of trigger trick him to do something, yeah? So external and internal triggers. So we have two kinds of triggers, external and internal. Let's see what is external trigger. External tr trigger is something that tells the users what to do next by placing information around the users. So tell the users what to do next uh, by placing information and we want to use four things to give these hints around the users. So the first one is paid triggers. Paid triggers like ads. So it's so common many businesses do that. Okay. For example, you see a picture of Coca-Cola and it, uh, it shows a cold drink. So what tricks? Drinking, yeah. So it uh, we can use uh, paid triggers or we can use earned uh, triggers. Earned triggers, they do they don't uh, the users don't um, buy directly. They don't spend money directly, but they spend in otherwise. So they spend their time. For example, watching a video or uh, saying uh, something on social media or somewhere else. So they spend their time, okay, but it's not the money. The third one is relationship trigger. Relationship trigger means when we, when the users invite someone like Facebook or like tagging uh, in, uh, in on Instagram that uh, someone tag you to see that. So it's the relationship trigger. And the next trigger is receiving trigger. Receiving triggers means, for example, when the user install an app uh, in her or his cell phone. So it prepares uh, the way that they can receive the next part, the next step. So it's about external. Let's see how about what is internal triggers. Internal triggers means tell the users 
what to do next through association is stored in user's mind through association is stored in user's mind it means uh, his or her thoughts emotions exactly whatever is stored you know uh, in the user's mind okay mostly we talk about emotions but negative emotions are so strong for example uh, those people that they have uh, they got depression they are depressed they are mostly they are more online rather than other people healthy people because they want to avoid this pain the pain of grief or sadness and they try to get involved more in uh, uh, on uh, social or internet activities so let's go to the next part or next step to build a hook action the second step in hook model is action action means the behavior and anticipation of reward but if you want to know that better you we should know the uh, B, the doctor bj fog model or fog model what is that five mother says if you want a, be a behavior occur we should no three factors these three factors should be present should be present at the same time in sufficient degree so these three factors at the same time in sufficient degrees then a behavior occurs okay so uh, about trigger that was the first step of hook model so i explained that right now motivation and ability motivation is the energy of actions there are three core motivators that all our behavior are driven by okay so all behaviors are according to these three core motivators seeking pleasure avoiding pain seeking pleasure avoiding pain seeking hope avoiding fear seeking uh, social uh, acceptance and avoiding social rejection so these are three core motivators right now we know triggers and motivation let's go to ability ability is the capacity to do a particular behavior so that the ability or the capacity to do a particular behavior which this capacity or ability is influenced by six factors that they call it in a uh, fox model uh, six elements of simplicity what are they time how much time does it uh, take how much money does it need how much physical effort does it need to do that action or do uh, behavior or how much uh, mental or focus does it need or requires okay or how much uh, or social deviance I forgot to read that even so brain cycle then uh, social deviance in social deviance how much this behavior is accepted how much is accepted this behavior okay the next one is non-routine non-routine means how much this uh, disrupts routines this action that we want that we ask the users to do how much this action disrupts uh, the routine uh, life or uh, the routine things that we do in our normal life so maybe a little bit be confusing for you but with this example you can understand it better for example if you want to log in in different platforms right now you have a few options it says okay you can log in with your facebook account so it helps me to decrease the time, the time that I want to use that platform, that software, or whatever it is, okay? So Facebook helps me to reduce the time, yeah? Or uh, another thing, another example I can say about sharing. Right now, for example, if you use Instagram and you want to upload a post, okay? At the same time, you can do that for your Facebook too. Or another interesting thing is that Google, you know that before Google there were uh, a few um, searching engine but all of them lost the game to Google why because it helps it tries to uh, help the users with these six elements to make it 
more simple, more easy to do. Okay, let's go to the next part. As we discussed the six uh, elements of simplicity, maybe you thought, okay, so it's so fantastic. We do, can do that like this, but there are some exceptions. Human mind is so complicated. Exceptions, heuristics. Heuristics are the mental shortcuts to make decision. What does it mean? Let's have a look at uh, those biased that they are heuristics. The first one, a scarcity effect. In 1975, a group of scientists, they offer uh, some participants two jars of cookies. In one of them, just a few cookies. In another one, full of cookies. And they wanted to know how they value these cookies. At the end of the experiment, they found out that these jar with less cookies, people found them more valuable and better than the other jar. Why? Because of the scarcity. When something is less, it means for people more valuable. The second uh, heuristics uh, or shortcut that affect the way that we design is the framing effect. The framing effect in 2007, uh, they offered uh, some people to participate in an amazing experiment with fMRI. As the fMRI is, are connected to the mind of these people, to the head of these people, they give them some wine. As they drink the wine, they announced the price of the wine from 5 till 90 euro, euros or dollars. And they found out as they increase the price of the wine, there are more activities in that area related to pleasure. So that means higher price, more enjoyment or more pleasure. This is that it affects our perception the way that we understand, we, we, we find out the taste of the wine, yeah? So the next one is anchoring effect. Uh, it's so familiar. The way that we understand, for example, if the price of the product, uh, they give us a, a discount, we compare this discount according to the price of the, that uh, product. So we decide according this relationship between the, uh, the product uh, ordinal price and the discount, then we decide that most of the time it's not that much. It's a just kind of way that they use our shortcut to affect our buying or purchasing uh, decision making. The next shortcut is endowed progress effect. It means that when we feel that we are near to go, our target, we do that faster and it affects our motivation. In an in a ex experiment, they give a, uh, two groups of people two, um, two different uh, punch cards. In each punch card, there were 10 squares, okay? 10 squares in each punch card. And if they punch the whole uh, squares, they get a free car wash, okay? So in one group, they give a punch card with two free punches. Two free punches to one group, the other group, no. All punches were blank and they should do that, okay? So that group with two free punches that they were closer to the goal showed 82% faster accomplishing the task. That means they do that faster to get that free one one-time car wash. Okay, so that was uh, about the shortcuts or heuristics, and let's go to the next part. Okay, the third step in hook model is variable rewards. What? Why? We know rewards, but what is variable rewards? I should explain an experiment in nineteen. Uh, 50s, Skinner, the famous uh, psychologist, did an amazing experiment by pigeons. 
These pigeons, when they want to get food, they should tap the lever. When they, sh when they tap, they get food. But after a while, Skinner changed the story. They get the food randomly. Not every time that they tap, they get, but this time, randomly. What is the consequence? They tapped more to get food. They tapped more. That means when people or species get something randomly, the reward, when they get the reward randomly, it increases the action. So when we say variable reward, that means this experiment. Don't forget that. Okay, let's go. Three kinds of variable rewards. Three kinds of variable rewards. The first one is the reward of the tribe. Reward of the tribe means make us feel accepted, attractive, important, and included. So, and a good example is social media. When you share something, a post, or the reward of the tribe, people, keeps you or the user coming back because you want to get it again. Yeah? So, uh, another good example is uh, Stack Overflow, uh, the internet. Uh, you, you can search it. Every day, more than 5,000 5, answers are produced by the users. Why? There is no money inside. But the tribe give you value. The tribe, you feel important because even they, they get a badge when they, uh, they are so good at you know, answering the questions. This is the reward of the tribe. Okay, let's go to the next one. Rewards of the hunt. If I want to explain this, I should take you back a little bit to the time. Uh, two, for two million years, mankind has eaten meat, okay? If maybe you are vegetarian or whatever, you're against it, but that's true. For two million years. But the first uh, instruments and tools that we use to kill other animals go back to 5,000 years ago. Five, sorry, 500,000 years ago. 500,000 years ago, 2 million so how we did that before that tools? Good, good question. The answer is what uh, Daniel Lieberman, a uh, famous scientist said, persistence hunting. We continue hunting at that time when we didn't have these, uh, these tools. We continue chasing until the time this uh, animal get got exa exhausted got exhausted and tired and the animal cannot go further then we got it so this state remained in our mind this evolutionary uh, uh thing okay so the runner actually the runner is driven the runner is driven by the chase not that target. So this chasing um, give us this pleasure, give us this good feeling, not even the, that thing. Because of this, we continue, we, we like to buy again and again, and we want more and more because of this chasing. When we get that, it's not comparable uh, to the amount of pleasure that we have when we want to get that, or the process, the process of chasing. Okay, the chasing mechanism, as I said, the chasing mechanism keeps us wanting and buying. An example, example of chasing mechanism. For example, these uh, gambling machines, every day in United States, every day, just in United States, one billion dollars, is spent just for getting reward? No, for the pleasure of the getting reward. People play with this, but they know most of the time they lose the money. But it's not about the getting the reward, it's about the chasing.
Another good example is Twitter. In Twitter, you know that when you use this app, the enjoyment comes from the chasing. Okay, the last step in hook model investment or IKEA effect. Maybe you have heard that. Uh, more, let me explain this way. The more effort or a little bit effort when you put in something, you value that more. You enjoy that more. This is the IKEA in English word. This English word they say or IKEA effect they call it because. Uh, we do a little bit of the assembling by ourselves. We value that more. And uh, another good example that I want to say is the alcohol or the first time that you had a beer or the, the first time that you had a beer or the first time that uh, maybe you smoked a cigarette. Remember, that was not good. But the persistence, the more effort we put in this tank, we started to believe this is something that uh, Jesse Shell said, Shell said, the famous uh, professor, and uh, he said, she said that anything, anything you spend time, it's amazing, listen carefully, anything you spend time, you start to believe, you start to believe it, yeah? And they call it rationalization. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the hook model and this amazing book. That the book was really written in a uh, kind of, I can say, difficult or academic way of English. That wasn't easy. And many examples and stories. And so it was so difficult to keep the track of the book. I tried my best. I'm, I'm sure you cannot find anything that uh, anything like the, the, the way that I did because it's not a summary. I try to teach it to you and you understand what's going on. Okay, thank you so much for watching uh, and please subscribe my channel if you watch it on my YouTube or if you watch it on my website. So that's okay. Till the next time, take care. Bye-bye.